and the like. Some picks later in the show next hour because, man, here we are. Hey, did you see the news? I mean, this is this this crosses um, really the sports genre and more into uh, everybody's human interest and all that. Uh, Tiger flying into Augusta yesterday had the world of golf and elsewhere uh, excited, and uh, we'll see if he's going to play. Of course, the news out of Tallahassee, uh, Coach Krikorian deciding to ride out. I thought the way that played out, very interesting, in that uh, my man sent an email to about 15 different reporters, and it was not through the university that he made the announcement that uh, he'd be moving on down the road. Didn't didn't use the word retirement, just step it away. And, uh, and I would say that... Um, he noted that money was not the issue because, and we'll give you a little peek behind the curtain. Yesterday, Tom and I were at football practice, and uh, this is all breaking as within an hour of practice, hour and a half of practice starting. And so the assembled press, many of whom we call friends, whether they work at Warchin or not, we're all abuzz, as one would be. This man is uh, the most successful coach uh, amongst the coaching staff. Uh, it, and I'm talking about the entirety of the athletic department. This is a guy who is a, a reigning national champion. And, and you don't usually see those folks decide, yep, yeah, I'm going to ride. And then if they do, you think immediately, well, money, you, you know, you kind of lean towards money or you lean towards perhaps, I don't know, scandal of something like is something coming down the pike that I don't know about and all of that other stuff. So, you know, everybody's got their antennas up is the whole thing. Everybody's trying to figure out what's what and why, because it isn't normal for a coach to win a national championship. And it's not his first uh, to be the reigning champion and decide to walk away. And so uh, I think you you look bigger picture about FSU's athletic department. Everybody's super sensitive when where money is is, you know, questioned frequently like how much of it or not does florida state have in order to compete and so when you lose a coach of that stature you think man they're not even gonna pay a, a national champion or you know a, a guy that has taken basically this program and built it from scratch into the preeminent program and in, in the entirety of the sport in the country you know it's like if they don't win it they're playing for it every year it's insane right and so i, I went to bed worried about that in a way not not, not losing sleep but thinking Man, are they? They're broker than I thought. They can't pay the soccer coach. Are they doing the body fat test on yeah, pennies? Yeah, is that like, what's going on yeah, here? What's going on here? I'm told that's not it, and he did allude to that and say that it wasn't it. Now, I, that sometimes that's just like a nice gesture or a way of saying that's exactly what it is. That's what I took it as. Yeah, yeah, a lot of times. But I'm told that it was a very generous offer. Yeah, <laughs> as in, yeah, yeah, right. Thanks for playing. Yeah, that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like. I am told that is not it at all. Uh, I'll just tell you that. Now, people might want to debate me on this, and they may have other sources that tell them something different. I don't know. I feel pretty good about mine, and I'm going to tell you that I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. Uh, I think that's uh, that's a that's a different sort of deal. Um, and you never know. There are relationship dynamics in everything, uh, all walks of life. You can't always know who gets along with whom and why. And if it's if there's irreparable damage done or distrust or it could be just at times a desire for something new, a different challenge. You know, I immediately also thought, Tom, if it's not that, then maybe it is uh, perhaps it's something to do with uh, an opportunity to take over the national team or something like that. He's had the kind of success where you would not be out of bounds and guessing that that guy has opportunities to to be head of it all. In the United States. Oh, sure. Or across right. the globe, considering all the relationships he's formed correct, with how many different correct. countries worth of players. So you would think that their programs, their club programs, the feeder ones would take great interest and pass up the line. That Absolutely. This guy makes our players better when they go over to the States and play in Tallahassee. Yeah. yeah. So I, there were a lot of angles that to be taken here. I just know that the world was uh, kind of, uh, uh, you know, everybody was looking around at each other like, what in the world is happening here? But yeah, we were watching stretches yesterday, and I felt like I took a gut punch. I was like, what in the hell? Well, you know. Is this whole thing about to be gutted? First, it's Deckerhoff. Sue's gone. <laughs> there goes Krikorian. Well, everybody starts connecting. We changing dots. our colors. But remember this. Remember this, too. There's there's something about the fact that it, 
I kind of always felt like, now this is just an aside. I kind of always felt like once the changes began, they would happen wholesale, primarily because most of our coach, you go back a few years, there was a stretch there where we were like, yeah, every one of our coaches have been there for 30 years. Like we, we're not getting rid of anybody. If you have any success at all, you're here for life, much to the chagrin of some in our fan base. So it was kind of like, you know, would you be st- this summer? Leonard Hamilton turned 74 coming up 74. Now he looks great. He looks 44. He looks 54, whatever you want to say. 74, 74. You wouldn't be stunned if coming up next year or the year after it's his last year. Why? You know, I mean, it's not, it's abnormal for somebody with that, uh, despite the, the, the young looking uh, appearance to, to want to have to put the kind of energy in you do to run a program at this level. You know, it's not shocking to find out somebody might want to walk away. I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying he wouldn't be surprised by it. Gene Decker off. Doing a Florida State game on a Saturday, turning around, flying out of town, clear across the country, Bucks, Seattle, or whatever. Man, that's not easy. That is taxing. That's taxing on me, let alone somebody his age. That's taxing on you. That's just hard. Yeah, that Minnesota trip was kind of BS. It's, like, hey, it's, a, doing it's a bit rough. It's now rough. he's been doing it for as long as he's been doing it. Right. And so you're not stunned to find out that one day he wakes up and goes, you know, I don't need to do this anymore. It's been a great run. I've, you know, he's been smart with his money, I'm assuming. Uh, you know, I've achieved everything I've wanted to achieve. I've called every imaginable important moment in Florida State football. Yeah, he's not getting paid $10 an hour. You know, so, and he still had the year left with the Bucks. So you're not shocked to hear that. Sue Simarow's been here for a very long time. I remember interviewing her year one. So I, I'm breaking into the business, and she's coming here as a coach. She had already been a coach. Northern Illinois. Then she comes here. She's been in the game a long time. There's, you know, we it's it's no secret. Her mom had health issues. Step away from the game for a year. Former player, Brooke Wyckoff, who had a great career here. I remember it very well. Stepped in admirably. You're like, okay, this makes sense. I'll call it a day. She leaves. You Again, you look at, Krikorian is not old. He ain't young. He's accomplished everything there is to accomplish here. I'm not saying that he's retiring. I am saying that I thought when the dominoes began to fell with uh, amongst the coaches at Florida State, it would feel overwhelming because I feel like almost by definition, in succession, there would be four or five people out of the mix, new people in the mix within a three-year span. That uh, It seemed to all make sense to me that, that we would all be like, whoa, whirlwind of activity throw in a new athletic director who's going to do things the way he wants to do them, and that might not always rub people the right way. This, however, was presented very clearly to the public that it was not um, mutually agreed upon the way that the Krikorian era was going to end. If he personally reaches out to the media, that tells you that there is conflict of some sort. It's reasonable to assume. Otherwise, People are weeping as there's a goodbye farewell press Correct. conference They'll, all standing together. Holding and him on high. There's a Garnet and Gold watch issued to him with yeah. three stars in it, you know? Yeah. No, no, agreed. I clearly there's something up in this specific instance. Um something to note here. Uh and and this is, and and people will apply this now to the situation with Coach Coach Krikorian. You also have a new president, by the way. So there's a lot going on at the university. But I want to point something out because I think it's going to matter moving forward. Very important context real quick, though. Remember, there's also new outfield walls at Dickhauser Stadium. Thank God. Yeah, but add that to the list. I think mm. that's the most significant move. Thank new God. New president, athletic director, nothing. What about those outfield walls? Lipstick on a pig. So here's what I tell you, uh, and I thought about this. It's a good thing, but it will re- likely, maybe already has, don't know, don't know. It will lead to some power struggles and conflict. It will. Florida State, for the first time since Dave Hart left, was forced out. Has a real athletic director with power who's been emboldened and been told that there is a chain of command and he has a job to do. Now, I don't want to offend family and friends of previous athletic directors. But that job was not similar to other athletic directors' jobs around the country in the Power Five in that they didn't have 
the same sorts of autonomy and real power that other athletic directors had at other locations in the Power Five. The way that Florida State's booster situation was set up, um, we, we all know Andy Miller had more power than the athletic director, period. There were You could make an argument, I could, that at certain stretches of time, Andy Miller had more power than the president of the university. That's how much power he had. Now, this athletic director, along with the shift in the way the athletic department and the boosters work together, leads to an athletic director having the kind of power that those aforementioned athletic directors at other Power Five universities are uh, used to having. And so now all of a sudden, there are going to be times where a coach of a program is going to think one way about a situation. An athletic director is going to have a different view of that situation, and maybe they sit down and work it out. Maybe it leads to a divide. Maybe it leads to somebody wanting to leave. Maybe it leads to somebody being fired. Maybe it leads to, uh, obviously, some sort of conflict. And that's normal in athletic departments. It is. That's normal at any job place where you might not see eye to eye with your immediate supervisor. You may say, I think we're going about this the wrong way. The key is that you're pulling in the same direction, that all of you want the same things. Ultimately, you may disagree about how to get there. You may disagree about how the funds are allocated and who gets what and why. And what is the impetus for that change? As long as we're all agreeing that we're going over here, that we this is the goal ultimately for us, because you can live with that conflict. In fact, I think that people in positions of power would like to surround themselves with competent, hardworking, in many cases, even smarter individuals than themselves. Great leadership is certainly surrounding yourself with people like that, and you want their input. You want them to be able to say, now, Jeff or whomever, have you considered this? Or that might be a mistake. And you don't take offense to that. You don't take umbrage to that. You, you aren't insecure enough to worry about that. It's so long as that person and you, even if you disagree on this point, are pulling in the same direction. And so I just, I just, I'm only observing that I think there will be some hiccups and some bumps in the road. And I am not saying that this specifically is one of those. I don't know the intricate details of that situation. You're right to point out, and it is self-evident, that if the three-time national champion, reigning national champion coach of your soccer program abruptly decides to leave and does not issue a statement channeled through the university, but rather emailed to 15 different reporters instead, uh, there was a problem. <laughs> so not everything was peachy. Clearly, there's an issue of some kind. What that specific issue is, I do not know or certainly can't say. I don't know. Um, you'll hear a lot of things in the weeks to come, I'm sure. Uh, it's, it's a fascinating uh, dynamic for Florida State right now because they finally have, I think, a legitimate, a legitimate chain of command. Well, there's two questions I think most people are asking um, after the way this was handled. Is there somebody who's next on the list? Is this a cleaning house in the athletic department? And is money an issue specific to the Krikorian? This is not, in my estimation, a cleaning of uh, cleaning of the house. No, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't think that there is going to lead to mass exodus. I think the timing certainly promotes that question. Uh, you know, because you could say, well, that's interesting. Sue Simarau decides to retire abruptly, and now Krikorian is gone, right on the heels of an athletic director being named. That seems more than a coincidence. Could also just be a coincidence. Could just be the Sue had served her time, had an incredibly successful career, has made enough money certainly to retire, had a uh, a, a family emergency this past year that's very public. I'm not speaking out of school. She decides to step down. With Krikorian, though, the question would be specifically, that was the second part of what I was saying, is are we low-balling a three-time national champion? Is that how broke we are? No. Because that's how you started the segment, you know, speculating, are, are we that broke? I, that's that, I thought that that was the immediate speculation that arose from the announcement he was leaving, was we all, as Knowles, let's talk as Knowles for a second, assumed that our program, athletic programs, the totality of what we're speaking of here, 
was in shambles to the point where we would let a three-time national champion walk over a dispute over a hundred grand, 200 grand, right? No, that in my mind, from what I've been told and what I've come to understand is not the issue. It was not that the university would not pay the man his money. That's important. It's important. So it has to be something else. And if it's something else that's interesting to me, it's why I ventured down the road that I just did because it is only natural, I think, when you go through these kinds of changes in the higher ups, that there are going to be bumps in the road or disagreements, and it's a new way of doing things. It's a dawn of a new day. No, listen, you get uh, you get to a place where um, you know you're you're conditioned to do things a certain way. You're very comfortable doing things a certain way. If there's change, uh, humans reject change by and large. They push back on change. All of us do. And, um, you know, they, they talk about adapt or die and all those other things. This is an interesting situation because if I'm just surface level having this conversation with you, Tom, I would just tell you this. It's one thing to say, OK, well, we have a new world order here and Michael Alford actually has power for once. We have an athletic director who can wield some and uh, and, and maybe he and the soccer coach have a disagreement. Don't know if they did or didn't. But let's say they do. Well, guess what? The soccer coach also has power because he's a three time national champion and he would get hired tomorrow by any program in the country. So all of a sudden you've got uh, both wielding. Mm -hmm. So it's not one side uh, that decides to unsheath. And so it is that you have, oh, I'll see you're unsheathing with one of my own. Well, what do we have here? Well, okay, this is an issue then. And uh, who knows? Who knows? Because there are options. Now there are options. This is, is Usually we don't read about these things where there are options. The thing that, that I like hearing is twofold. Number one, if in fact – you know, the whispers that you've heard that money is not an issue as it relates to Kikorian's departure. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the thing I like hearing is chain of command, that we actually have a healthy line of command from the president through an empowered, empowered athletic director twofold from the president's side and also holds the purse strings in a way that the athletic director has not a long time. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'd like to operate with a vertical chain of command. Correct. People know who to report to. That sounds fundamental. Well, we weren't living by the fundies for a long time around here. So those are two good things. Number three, I'll say to you and share to you what I said in the practice fields yesterday. You better not be coming for Lonnie. I swear. Don't you dare. Nobody's I'll coming for anybody. This is because you, you're, you, again, you're just looking for dominoes. If the dominoes stop here, then we good. We good. <laughs> don't you take my softball. I swear. Listen, I don't think anybody's coming for anybody about the the money or anything like that. I don't I don't think that's uh, I know verbiage uh, phrasing Jeff. I don't I don't think that anybody is after anybody's job right now. Right. I don't think anybody's coming after well, anybody that In way. the fog of the moment when we were walking in watching stretches in and the hearing fog of war yes, everybody yesterday. You're hearing the ward chant, the yeah, guys are you know yeah, the yeah. whistles are blowing and they're kind of marching up and down yeah, the yeah, field getting yeah. ready to go into drills that so you're thinking, "Oh my god, where does it end?" Yeah, it's it's fascinating. There are, I, I think, for one one thing that's omnipresent, uh, and we'll go to break. One thing that persists amongst the fan base and their in the collective worry of Florida State fans and alumni and boosters and supporters of any kind everywhere is that all of us are absolutely right to be concerned that we are not amongst the elite. Uh, across athletic departments and is and are anybody really in, in the ACC. So you can be poached until there is a more equitable distribution. I'm not demanding that we steal from the SEC and the Big Ten and make them. I'm not saying that. I'm saying until the contract with the AC, television contract with the ACC in ESPN or anybody else that wants to set up streaming rights. And we've seen these deals all over. Read the Sports Business Journal. There's one, and there's a new one every day. That's the new world order over there, selling streaming and all that other stuff. Until the ACC can get in the same damn arena as the SEC and the Big Ten, you are susceptible, all of your coaches, of being poached by the money runoff that the SEC and the Big Ten has. So if it takes one athletic director, to decide, I am damn tired of being impotent when it comes to softball. Every year I look up, and there's Florida State and Oklahoma battling it out to see who's the best program in the country and throw in a couple of others, right? 
And I'm tired of it. You know why? My wife played softball at Ohio State, and my daughter is currently playing softball in the Big Ten. And damn it, we shouldn't suck at softball. And you know what? We've got more money than God. Go get Lonnie Alameda. She wins, and they don't have a damn thing at Florida State. So let's go take her. That could easily happen. Hey, now. No, no, no. Don't you speak <laughs> that. Don't you speak it. <laughs> I'm saying it takes one guy. Listen it here, athletic office. Inside Doak Campbell Stadium, you make her comfortable. You do what you need to do. We like we there's like excellence so, spread out over the calendar. There's only so much you can do. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if Texas A&M tomorrow decided they wanted to win at softball, they're tired of this nonsense, they would overpay Lonnie Alameda or anybody else who they deem in that category to come and win in softball. Coach Kikori could probably name his price. What's he making? Four hundred grand? He could probably he could two million dollars. It takes one overzealous nut job with more money than sense to say, you know what? I'm tired of losing at women's soccer. Why do we suck at women's soccer? If I'm Southern Cal, why do I suck at women's soccer? UCLA kicks ass every year. Hell, Santa Barbara and these other slapdick programs that we never we have no chance to be. They win all the time. We don't win a thing. So what am I supposed to do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You overpay and bring her in. Sorry. Jeff Carey Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Tallahassee's 30-year-old funny paper and American Legion Post 13 have joined forces to become Major Morale. The new ragazine has four more pages of post activities and military information that you probably never knew. But don't worry, it's still as politically correct and newsworthy as always. Okay, it's the same funny stuff. But it's still only available at the sponsors' locations like Tallahassee Automobile Museum, Krispy Kreme Donuts, Keith Lawson Services, or ABC Flooring. Tallahassee's leading supplier of in-stock, top-of-the-line ceramic, carpet, waterproof, and hardwood floors since 1990. At ABC Flooring, you can pick out your floor, and installation can begin in 48 hours. ABC Flooring is also the leading supplier of in-stock landlord property management products in the Panhandle. Visit their warehouse showroom on Capitol Circle Southeast or call 877-6600. Hey, fans, our partner ISF Inc. is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Hey, this is your chiropractor, Dr. Ryan Finn with Finn Chiropractic, encouraging you to spring into health. People are outside, working and playing, enjoying Tallahassee's beauty, but new injuries and sinus problems are blooming everywhere. While we at Finn Chiropractic have helped thousands with spring-related issues, the only way to know if we can help you or your loved one is to come in for the phenomenal health evaluation. Go to FinnChiro.com to take advantage of our new patient special offer. That's F-E-N-N, FinnChiro.com. And remember, your chiropractor loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. People trust Sellers for better tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Sellers Flooring Advisor Ryan Fitzgerald. We understand most people don't come in with great knowledge of what they're looking for or what they need. So at Sellers, what we try to do is use our expertise to guide you through the process. Get Sellers working for you. We make it easy, and we have the experts on staff to get you where you need to be, and we give you the options. On Capitol Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhan Drive, call 656-8453 online at sellerstile.com this is kyle service manager from barino heating and air schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program with guaranteed same day service 15 percent off necessary repairs and 25 dollars berry books to use towards air filters and other products turn to the experts at carrier and barino heating and air any day anytime anywhere online at barinoac.com Florida license cac 1816 now go, go, call seven no glass. Now get on the road and get it done fast. Your local family-owned glass company, serving the Big Bend for over 15 years. At Seminole Auto Glass, we care about your safety. Insurance will send you wherever it benefits them, not the quality of service. There's a difference in auto glass companies. Trust your local auto glass experts. Seminole Auto Glass. They handle any kind of broken glass, and you know who they are. Better call Seminole. <laughs> 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. Find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Excellent. Stupendously well. Everybody doing great. Woo! Hey, Eric. Thanks, man. Appreciate your contribution to what it is we do here on the Jeff Cameron Show, 933 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. He writes, Go Knowles. Sending my contrib- contribution to my favorite podcast, guys, Jeff and Tom, JCS Show, Drinks on Me. All right. Friday it is. I already deemed Friday tall boy Friday. Tommy can and use this uh, little contribution from our friend Eric and go down to the uh, Hogly Wogly. Oh, roll go. in right. here with some tall boys, baby. It's a small cooler, but it's very cold at the Hogly Wogly. Th- do we still any Hogly Wogglies around? They still kicking? I think I see them on the way home to uh, Palm Harbor. See my folks. A little Hogly Wogly, like Piggly you know, Wiggly dispute. Chiefland Cross City Hogly Wogly action. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Eric. We'll see you for some beverages uh, next Friday at the happy hour. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's. Where do you want to go? I guess that's up to me. I could. I could go to six to three. We lose last night uh, to Florida. Toronto beating Boston last night. <laughs> in the TD you Garden. Want, you want to go there? Yeah. yeah. I got thoughts. Uh, boy. Did we have? Did we? Did, what happened with the wager in the other night? It was Monday? bad. It was bad. Did, didn't happen. Did but that's why I said very minute amount. Take some chances. Those chances did not pay. Was it like a six to one beat down? Ah, uh, yeah. Actually, one of them precisely. I thought I saw that. I think it was 13 to two was the uh, combined, combined score. Combined score. Yeah. yeah no, it didn't go it well didn't at all. That's sometimes okay. it sometimes it kicks back on you. Hey, at the end of the show, so stay tuned, everybody. You know how I'm wearing out my friends at prize picks. Wearing them out. They're tired of me. They're like, who is this Jeff Cameron character in Tallahassee? And why are we paying him? He's killing us. So I, uh, I've got some, pro- the numbers are wrong again. The numbers are wrong again for the Valero Texas Open. I'm all over it, all over it, and I'm ready to go. That's one idea to pull back the curtain that uh, I talked to prize picks about. I said, hey, if you like a day of the week, Wednesday ahead oh, of a PGA event Cameron's is your day. You. He's killing you. He's, <laughs> that's the day. He's now, it's going to be like Jacksonville State. You're going to pay him to beat you, Oh, but that's okay. Yeah. So. You know, a, a, a game that um, the three and the fifth was uh, is is what did it for the Knowles uh, to fall six to three there. Um, you know, I would just say this. That game didn't bother me the way that some games in this series in the past have. And by the way, meets like eight and three now against rivals. So it's not like he's steady been losing to them. Um, but. This one didn't bother me because we were one of nine with runners in scoring position. And baseball is a game where that happens, where you don't get a big hit in crucial moments and you lose because of it. Or you hit the ball on the head and somebody tracks it down not once but twice in the alley near the wall. You're like, all right, man, well, good contact, drove the ball, worked the count to get into a position to drive the ball, did something with it when you you got a chance for contact when you were sitting red. And uh, it was at somebody. So I'm going to live with that. I'm going to live with that. They left 11 guys on base. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but with a lot of hard hit balls scattered throughout, it's just at the wrong time, you know, because even the ones that landed again at the wrong time. Um, the, the thing that frustrated me is obviously you got some shakiness 
fielding the baseball, throwing the baseball. And then the situation, it, I know it's early, but it's one nothing. It's 0-2, nobody on. Like, I just hate those situations. And then you got a guy scoring, you know, basically five pitches later. That, that'll that hurt your feelings a little bit. 0-2, bases empty, two out. I mean, you know, those tend to haunt you, as does in the ninth inning. It's over bottom of the eighth. It's over. When you, it's a two run game, yeah, a nobody's on, run. and it's a little league home run over the over the span of five pitches because you have a two base error followed by a couple of wild pitches. We I only mean, made two errors on the game, and I, I understand what you're saying. Not but that every- run feels like a backbreaker because you had shrunk it down to five three. There might be a little bit more game pressure, but it just it's hard to amass that third run after it for no reason should that run ever cross the plate. Yeah, we would have just lost five to three. Uh, I, I, yeah, I understand what you're well, saying. One guy on, and you're thinking, okay, and yeah. let's see what happens. Yeah, the meat grinder here. Yeah, I'm not as worried about it. It's a midweek affair that drives me nuts. It was two to two going into the fifth. Um, if they had five airs and looked scared, when we were in the midst of those losing streaks against Florida, man, there were games where you're like, you're scared to death. Look at them. They're just waiting for somebody to make a mistake for this thing to fall apart. That even happened back when we were up six to nothing in one of the games. That's not how this game is played now. Yeah. That's the back and forth. It's a good game. It's a midweek game. It's ruined by the fact that it's a midweek game. They need to stop doing the nonsense. We need to get into series where my ace faces your ace and my two faces your two and my three faces your three because I think that's Florida's ass if that happens on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series. But that's not what happens. It's a one-off Tuesday, throw it over in Jacksonville, and then a one-off Tuesday in Florida and one-off Tuesday here. It's stupid. Wouldn't you be okay with them doing the three games in sequence and then just have it in different towns each day? Make it like a carnival. Well, it's they, a traveling they show. They do that. I think South Carolina and Clemson yeah. does that. Right. So tally still, one night, I, Jayville. I, I guess it's better than what they do here, but I still don't like it. I still don't like it. I would love, and it would be good for both programs. It would be great for college baseball, at least in the state. Just Can we get back to the four-game series? What's so hard about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? That's the way we used to do it. I had the great fortune many moons ago. I bring it up every time I bring up the, the four-game series. Uh, the, the late, great Lee Bowen, who hired me, I got to do color with him. Brett Groves had a towering grand slam in Gainesville that uh, is still traveling, and I stomped on his call when he got mad at me. But lesson learned, nonetheless, I had the good fortune of doing that as a color analyst. The point would be that the intensity of those series – is so far beyond this one-off n- nonsense where you treat it pretty much like a midweek game and you're not throwing anybody that's amongst your aces, and this is what happens. I hate that. Yeah, I hear you, but at this point, now I'm a little angry at you. You know why? <laughs> because few people have the bat phone quite like you do uh-huh. to make something happen. Sure. I've, I've With 11, made... there was like, you'd be like, oh, hi, Jeff, what are you calling for? With me, you'd be like, yeah, what? Yeah. Hey, buddy, what's the deal? Do I need to call O'Sullivan? What's the deal here? Yeah, I have waited. Um, you know, it's uh it's it's frustrating. It's um what are you gonna do? Uh I would love for Florida State to uh to have the opp- opportunity uh to to play a series against them and, and get back to it the way it once was. Let it be the week of finals that he that he was mad about in the preseason interview or whatever. There is your time right there. I know they wouldn't be afraid, especially if me called down there and he said, what, are you afraid? Play three days in a row? Let's do it. ACC won't let us do it during finals week. Let's go. You and me. Alternate the years. Three in a row. Home and home. What was our, did we sweep Florida last year? What was that? Or was it two and one? Uh, no, we swept. I'm pretty sure we, we swept, swept both for, rivals, we right? Sw- yeah, we swept Florida last year. Yeah. Uh, it might have been two. I don't know that they played in the baseball grounds last year. I forget. I Pandemic is a funny thing. Like I just that. knew that very fuzzy. I just knew that meat was whatever he was eight and two against the rivals coming, yeah. in, coming into that game. Last but the night. thing is, I like the Jacksonville atmosphere. It's always bustling. I want to go to one of those. I've been to one of those. Ira thinks it's great. A lot of people do. I, I don't know. Boy, that is, that is harsh. <laughs> Ira thinks it's great. <laughs> I don't. That is the most transparent code for he's wrong or, you know what? Driving I, over to freaking Jacksonville. <laughs> with there those, it is. It's the drive. That's not just the drive. I could drive two hours down to Gainesville, too, but it's just it. I, I, it's not the way it's supposed to be. Obviously, the money grab in Jacksonville is great. And, uh, you know, I would like the series to be the series. What if the only way they did it was they played three in Jacksonville? Would you agree to it? Or would you say, no, I'd rather keep it the way it is? If, uh, say that again. I'm the sorry. only way they'd agree to it is if it's three in Jacksonville. I'd be better off with that. Yeah. 
a weekend series in Jacksonville, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Sure. You do it? Okay. Oh, absolutely. Anything to get rid of this current nonsense. It How about just... Orlando? Three three <laughs> games in Orlando. Yeah, you're pushing things. Okay. All right. But yes, the answer is yes. Could be three games in uh, Sop Choppy. That's fine. Let's go. Let's roll on over to Sop Choppy, everybody. That's close enough. Tuesday's football practice. I'll tell you about it. Next, Jeff Cabot Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. Leon County's Operation Greenlight program is running through Saturday, April 2nd. The program is part of a statewide initiative helping drivers pay off their fees and get back on the road with reinstated licenses. We either get them to pay off their debt in full if possible or set up a payment plan. Based on how much they owe, we figure out how much they need to put down, but with that agreement in writing, they'll get their license back. So Channon Cash Russell, the director of criminal courts for the Leon County Clerk, it's an opportunity to pay off any overdue court obligations, including traffic tickets, and save 40%. You can participate over the phone, online, or in person. If you're paying in person, you can visit the Leon County Courthouse in downtown Tallahassee or the Northeast Branch office on Metropolitan Boulevard from 8 a.m. until 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. The Northeast Branch office will also be open on Saturday, April 2nd from 9 until 3 p.m. This is Rachel Lene with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A wind advisory continues until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Daytime highs approaching 82 this afternoon. Under partly cloudy skies, southerly winds 15 to 20 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows level off around 67. Highs around 76 tomorrow. Scattered thunderstorms likely. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 80. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. Siri, tell me a joke. The past, present, and future walk into a bar. It was tense. All jokes aside, the trained professionals at Mac and More Systems are serious about Apple products. For all your Mac repairs, call Mac and More Systems at 894-3622. 894-3622. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. It's Congressman Michael Waltz on The Greg Tish Show. Good morning, Congressman. How are you doing? Hey, doing well. Again, just what you have to go through day in and day out. I don't know how you have hair left or like Matty Rowe, just completely bald. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. And the irony of it all, the progressives are the tail wagging the dogs. This whole bipartisan White House is a joke. Mm. We're just watching them you know, eat their own. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. <laughs> Team Chad and Chen. Make sure everybody gets it on the podcast and the obviously the War Chant TV feed. We've got everybody involved here as uh, Hamilton Home Loans legendary team Chad and Shannon make it so much easier for you from a speed standpoint, simplicity standpoint, and of course a service standpoint. It's not an intimidating process. It's an opportunity to learn and get the best possible deal. Great rates, cutting edge technology, transparent communication. You want a five-star mortgage experience? Call my friends at Hamilton Home Loans. That's Chan, uh, Chad and Shannon, legendary team there. You can give a call today, 844-FSU-LOAN, 
844-FSU-LOAN. If you call and you talk to them, they're going to talk football with you. That's cool. You can say, well, I was just listening to the Jeff Cameron show, and he was talking about you guys. And he said this about practice yesterday. Yeah, they're just chatting it up. Next thing you know, boom, I got a home loan. Just like that. 844-FSU-LOAN. Uh, FSUHomeLoans.com website. FSUHomeLoans.com. Practice sucked yesterday, uh, in my estimation. I didn't feel like uh, they were sharp at all. And uh, that was confirmed when I asked Coach after practice. The very first question was, uh, was it commonplace to have a practice like this, uh, what I describe as a lackluster practice, after a scrimmage? And he used that as an opportunity to talk about not being common, trying to do something that is uncommon. And I think he's right. I think he probably expected it. I, I It is fairly common to see sort of um, a lull after the intensity of a scrimmage. Uh, everybody ratchets up their level of intensity. You can tell people that you have to be that way on a daily basis, how you go about your life, but no human being can live that way. You can't be on edge all the time. You cannot be hyper-focused 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It is human nature that you're building to a place. That's why Saturday game days are so much more intense, obviously, with more on the line than a Wednesday practice. So you're going to be at a different level, both emotionally, both in focus and intensity, uh, when there is something to be gained or lost, something tangible that day, that that night, whatever it might be, in the case of the scrimmage that morning. Um, jobs are on the line and guys know that when that, when the lights come on for lack of a better term, that they're being judged more harshly, more critically, uh, more intently than they were on Tuesday during drills. And so they got to get to a place. All these guys have to get to a place. Well, then there's a natural come down. You'd like to think that if you scrimmage on a Saturday, the Sunday Monday buffer between the next practice is enough for you to have come down and then get back up. That's what coaches are hoping for. And to be sure they get back up to a certain level, but not the level that he was hoping for. And I understand when he says, look, we walked out of that scrimmage thinking we're pleased with what our guys know, you know, on display was a level of understanding in the scrimmage. Uh, everybody thinks about the physical. Everybody thinks about the run fast, jump high, hit hard, all of that. Execute a pass, make a guy miss, whatever it might be. The things that that, that make up a football game that we remember. Uh, but coaches are also looking to to be sure that their players understand what is being asked of them within the context of the position they play, the segment group, obviously, and or the scheme. Uh, certainly what the coaches have taught up to that point. So I thought it was interesting and rewarding and uh, I think a positive, even amidst this negative that yesterday's practice was described as, that he said, hey, look, I walked off the field after the scrimmage feeling very good about what our guys know. The reason, and, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here for him because I, I think I really got why he was mad. The reason he was upset about yesterday's practice was that when you showcase that level of knowledge on the field that you can play under intense scrutiny scrutiny, and with real speed and passion and violence and still execute scheme as it's been taught, technique as it's been taught, that means you have no room to take a step backwards. You, we now know under the harshest conditions that you understand what is tasked of you. So don't be BSing around on a Tuesday and revert back to pre-scrimmage where you're technical and you're learning and you're soaking it in and digesting. Play fast. I know you know. You proved you know. Now play fast. Play faster. Execute faster, faster, faster so that the games become easy. He wants it to be that the games are the easiest thing you do during the week. All coaches say that true if you do something so repetitively so often so frequently and in this case violently intensely all those things then you get out there on a football field things slow down it gets easier for you and yesterday they reverted back to half step in a little bit the camp i think has been a raging success it sounds like the coaches do too yesterday frankly may have been their worst day may have been their worst day it sounds like it we were both there we watched the practice our observations 
not a coach's observation, but our observations were that they were very intentional, very slow. Uh, it took too long to get set up, play to play. I didn't think they executed at a high level, my opinion there. We don't always know what the call is on the field. I concede that sometimes things can look like they're not executed, but not knowing what the defensive call was or what the read was on every play, you, you can't always be sure. But my view of what we saw was a lack of execution and uh, a slower practice than we were accustomed to seeing. Yeah, it's lack of urgency. You know, the one thing that was different yesterday was they had officials for the first time in camp, at least I've noticed. And I've been to every single one that's viewable by the public or by the media, excuse me, not the public. Um, so maybe there were some extra instructions on how to line up or they're double checking with officials to make sure that the things that they've been doing for weeks are correct. But I would imagine they had officials at the scrimmage anyway. So, you know, that's only part of the excuse. But in multiple drills, whether it's offensive and defensive lines or working with scout team players and then you got seven on seven on the yeah. left. Mm -hmm. I've been watching the trenches a lot. I mean, laborious between each rep. And you're oh, going, you ask Come those on. guys, big dudes to hold a stance that long. Yep. yep. It's brutal. You're not going to get uh, guys firing off the ball when they've been in a three point stance for 30 seconds. Right. And then it, Blood over to 11 on 11s, which they, you know, interspersed throughout the day. Depending upon the day, it's not always the same sequence of events, but we saw that in the beginning, which you always see, at the end, which is always there, but in the middle portion as well. And a couple of times, guys were flagged. And it's like, well, of course they are. That, I, that's a frustration of mine in the course of a game, in the flow of a game. If you're going to run hurry up, then you shouldn't be snapping the ball with five seconds left in the playground. Right, let's go. Because these poor dudes, especially the interior offensive linemen, are just waiting and waiting, and it's one little flinch and you're done. So that was yesterday, but it was their worst day to me. It was their worst. And if that's their worst, then I feel a hell of a lot better than I did last fall camp. You know, I think, Tom, there's a couple things here to to point out. I, I continue to be very, very impressed uh, with the ability of Tate Rodemaker to, to, to hit people in the middle of the field. He exposes and completes and makes plays over the middle of the field better than Jordan Travis does period. And it leads me to believe that if this offensive line were really good, as in you could trust them to provide a safe pocket and plays to develop, Tate Rodemaker would have a legitimate chance to win the job. But that offensive line is not going to do that. So all things being equal, you're going to need Jordan Travis's ability to buy time. Now, to be sure, Jordan has a different skill set that Tate does not. And you couldn't ask Tate to try to execute plays outside the pocket in the same manner that Jordan does. So there's a point counterpoint there. I'm just saying, ideally, I would think almost every offense in an ideal situation with proper protection, protection wants to be able to make you defend the entirety of the field. And Tate does that better. Yeah, he does. But I would say that Tate is not punchless on the run and Jordan is not punchless over the middle. That's it's just fair. that these are distinct strengths and, and weaknesses. Correct. It's not that they cannot do the other Correct. thing because Tate on the run has made some plays this camp too. Sure. Well, rolling he's, a, out. he's an athletic guy. There's no getting yeah. around that. He's not a statue. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not talking about 40 yard scrambles because of a protection or, <laughs> you know, uh, somebody no. got out of their lanes. I'm just talking about rolling out and throwing the football. But I, one thing for Jordan yesterday, it's frustrating. And you don't want to mention a player because that probably violates the spirit of practice, but catch the ball. You know, there's quite a few situations where he's doing enough and it's right up that seam or in between the seams. And it's, hey, man, let, let this pay off for your quarterback. It was just it was contagious yesterday. There was a lot of malaise, but I'm sure tomorrow is going to be quite spirited. Well, it'll have to be because obviously uh, it's going to be expressed to them in no uncertain terms that that that. Thursday has to be better. I mean, he sent the message yesterday immediately following practice. Um, we saw position groups getting a little extra attention after practice. Um, so, you know, again, I, I think that uh, you'll see a more spirited and better effort tomorrow. I just want to continue to watch growth. I, I need I, – both those guys have room to grow, both quarterbacks that are in the mix. And, and you know, listen, it's Jordan Travis's job. I get it. I'm just – pointing out that Tate's come a long way, and I'm pointing out that he has a skill set that if they were able to protect him, he could take advantage of certain areas of the field more effectively. I need Jordan to get to that place where I say that about him as well. It's important for the viewers and listeners of this show to realize who's saying that too. 
that you're saying that mm-hmm. that Tate's come a long way, and you're saying so without a, a doubt, not oh, hemming and hawing. That, that, right, yeah, but that's important unequivocally, right? Because you were unequivocally the other way until this new evidence presented itself. This camp, so that's yeah. he's changed your mind in short. Well, I just wish I could see a scrimmage though. I, I wait. Right, the spring right. game will give us a better idea. Now, I hate that it all boils down to that, but given past experience and the context clues, you've got to look at a guy that has had great practices. But I need you to show me in a game-like situation where there's a measure of pressure, whether that be a scrimmage or a spring game, that you're going to make those same decisions and throws on time. What I like about where he's grown up is there's a there's no more indecision. More often than not, when that back foot on the final step of a drop hits, the ball is coming out. There's not a now yesterday they both were disjointed for a variety of reasons, but the the that back foot hits you got to throw the ball and that's an area that Jordan needs to get better because sometimes when that back fit, foot hits now I get it because when you have the skill set that he has where you know nobody one on one if you see him if you see him nobody one on one is going to get you down it's easy not to get rid of the ball but I just he's got to get better at that hour number two fourth coming stay with us Jeff Cameron show ninety three three real talk radio and War Chant TV. That is the smell of amazing barbecue from Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue. There's only one thing that could possibly make Kenny's amazing barbecue better, and that's an ice-cold adult beverage. Now you can do just that. Pair an ice-cold beer with all your Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue favorites. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of Havana. Get your fill at the grill. While other gun stores come and go, Ren Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. You were always more than my mom. You were my role model, my best friend, and biggest supporter. You filled my days with unconditional love. And you also prepared for the day when you couldn't be here. Because of the woman you were back then, I'm able to be the woman I am now. Your planning made this moment possible. Set your family up for life. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance. Your friends for life. This is Andy Cohen. When I was a law enforcement officer, I devoted my life to a career of service and protection. Who's protecting you? Give me a call. 850-671-FARM. That's 671-FARM. Helping you is what we do best. Southern Farm Bureau Life Insurance Company, Jackson, Mississippi. Not licensed to do business in all 50 states. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. Breaking news this hour at townhall.com. I'm Bob Agnew in Washington. Just a few minutes ago, President Biden wrapping up his speech on his plans for dealing with COVID-19 moving forward. He says they include uh, avoiding a shortfall in vaccine doses in the event of another surge. We cannot allow that to happen. Congress, we need to secure additional supply 
now. And the president says the U.S. should provide a supply for other countries as well as part of its previous promises. The German government says it has received assurances from Russia that European companies won't have to pay for their Russian gas supplies in rubles. Meanwhile, the BBC's Adam Easton reports Poland has announced plans to wean itself off of most imports of Russian energy. Mr. Morawiecki said his government had devised Europe's most radical plan to stop using Russian oil, coal and gas. Alternative and most likely more costly supplies are being sought from South Africa, Colombia and Australia. And correspondent Frank Jordan reports this could be just the first blow to Russia's energy exports to European countries. They've all basically said that they want to draw down these energy purchases. But the question is, how quickly can it be done? And the Polish government announced today that it wants to end all Russian oil imports by the end of this year. Many observers say that may be a bridge too far, but Poland should be able to stop buying Russian gas by the end of the year. A soldier has been killed in a helicopter incident at an Army airfield in Georgia. The Army says the soldier died around 2 o'clock this morning at Wright Army Airfield at Fort Stewart. Lieutenant Colonel Lindsay Elder, a Fort Stewart spokesperson, says two Black Hawk helicopters were involved in an incident. But she's not saying whether one or both of them crashed. That's correspondent Rita Foley reporting. NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei is back on Earth after a record 355 days on board the International Space Station. Hey, hello, everybody. Got a ride home today with two Russian cosmonauts. More from townhall.com. Moose is the German Shepherd, now 11. And he's been an amazing dog. Moose is so active and so alert and hasn't had any kind of health problems at all. He has been on Dynavite since he's a puppy. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Now, Moose, at age 10, had a litter of 10 puppies with a friend's dog. We kept Lupo, his son, and the other puppies were given to friends. But one of the requirements was they must start those puppies on Dynavite. And someday if Lupo has puppies, they'll be on Dynavite as well. We tell anybody that has a dog, if there was something that you could do right from the beginning so that you don't have expensive veterinary bills, why would you not do it? Get the Dynavite. Dynavite for life. You won't believe how happy your dog will be. I get my Dynavite from D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Back by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
happened, what transpired, where we're at, why yesterday's practice uh, setback in terms of intensity and focus, at least according to Coach Norvell. He was just to clarify if, if anybody didn't watch the video footage on warchant.com, he wasn't incensed. He doesn't, you know, it's funny, he doesn't do as much of the uh, message sending with with volatility and or um uh, inference the way that uh, Jimbo did. Um drama? Yeah. Contrived yeah, drama? Yeah, you, you right, could right. say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Contrived drama. Yeah, he doesn't do that. I'm appreciative of that. Well, although I liked both because it made me laugh. He believes being consistent every day because it'll be more credible to the players. That's clearly his philosophy is I'm going to do as I say, and you can know what to expect out of me mm -hmm. each day. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to build out of you. Something did show up yesterday. I put it in my notes. In fact, uh, and I, I wanted to, I wanted to point this out because this is the positive. Uh, I thought it was, fascinating that he talked about the young guys glowingly amidst all of this there was talk of how good bishop thomas has played daniel lyons continues to make an impact every day every day and he he that's true and hester looks really good as a freshman okay so daniel lyons yesterday against a higher profile named player mm -hmm. on the offensive line had one hell of a rep that i thought oh well yeah so that. even if he gets elevated for a sequence or two this looks good and I thought in general yesterday, the big stars were uh, Robert Cooper. Well, it's every day. He's a stud. He goes where he wants, basically. I want to point this out. We're making – I'm glad you brought this up, Tom. I've seen all but, whatever, two practices. I'm telling you, Cooper dominates. I When he wants to, like, if he's decided this is a rep that matters, this is something where I need to whoop a little ass or, the you know, nobody on this team can block him. Nobody on this team. Now, there'll be people in the conference who can. Nobody on this offensive line can block Robert Cooper, period. When he, when he decides to get that locomotive moving, you're, that's your ass. And Lovett flashes, and Lovett has dominant periods, too. Dominant oh, periods. He's a good player. But, They're great up the middle. They're going to be very, very good there. But Cooper, it was different Ooh. yesterday. That was, oh, man. It didn't matter. It just didn't matter. You know, it's funny that you bring it up because you were really focused yesterday on the interior of the uh, defense and offensive Yeah, the whole lines. of the defensive yeah. line yesterday. So one thing to point out, I, I it was the week before, maybe the week, whatever it was before we broke for spring break, there was a day where I was watching Norvell coach him up, and even though they weren't live scrimmage like seven, none of that, the drills, he was so violent and so fast. And you could just see, I think he really realizes uh, there's no, this is it, man. If I'm going to the league, if I got any chance, he's going to have to put together great tape this year. And I just think he's going to go get it. He's getting after it. I think he's going to be a problem for everybody we face. Cooper is going to be a name you hear often and that we are going to celebrate. Yeah, he's uh, the, the biggest star from yesterday. I thought Michael Pittman had another good day from the times I ventured over uh, from one half of the field to the other. He made a couple of flash plays again. He made another contested catch, uh, back shoulder, um, mm -hmm. and that was uh, that was a Tate throw, wasn't it? Was. It? Yeah, it was yeah, another it was. Tate throw. Well, Tate, uh, well, Tate's the road maker comes from he's, the Latin. He's that correct shoulder. He's got a, He's having a good camp. Yeah, Bishop Thomas, camp. I thought, had the better of the day between he and Daniel Lyons yesterday. Though like, Lyons will uh, consistently every day has been somebody who has flashed in moments, but Bishop Thomas was consistently catching my eye yesterday. They're, I mean, they've got so much depth up the middle. It's ridiculous. You might have a portal kid out of that particular segment. Well, group. I don't know about that. Because they've got seven of them, eight of them maybe. Good, good, because you need a lot of those guys. You need a lot of the, the wear and tear of that position group. Uh, what is reasonable to expect from an effort standpoint, I'm telling you, it's hard. Those, those big guys, they get tired quick, uh, especially with today's fast-paced offenses. They get tired very, very quick. So you you need a deep group up the gut. You need a deep group of defensive linemen, period. Uh, and I do think that uh, that, that is the, the area of, of strength for this football team. Good. I mean, I, I'd rather be concerned about a, a linebacker or, or something like that or a defensive end even. Um, I don't want teams to be able to line up and emasculate us by running the football. If you can shut that down and one and, and make teams one dimensional, it changes everything about what's possible for you. It changes your defensive calls. So yeah, man, uh, that that's the good news of camp. That's the good news of this team so far is that up the gut they're sound. I mean, you I can list all seven too. Cooper and Lovett are are the first two. Mm -hmm. 
Malcolm Ray has been excellent this camp. Consistently good at the end of last year. Josh Farmer, you mentioned him on the way out of practice yesterday, and he has reps where you go, oh, man, that'll work. Correct. All right, so that's four. You got the two young kids that we like to talk about a lot and Lions and Bishop Thomas. Then Jared Jackson, every once in a while, reminds you he's got Hulk strength. He's crazy. Mm -hmm. But it's it's about consistency. Yeah. So there's the seven him, yeah. right there. And there are a couple other kids who make plays every once in a while, too. But seven dudes, that is, that's old school Florida State at that position. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Let's keep that rolling. And, you know, by the way, uh, when we're talking about these guys, like, you haven't mentioned uh, Quayshawn Fuller or, or any of these other guys that, you know, have potential. They like what Turner's doing, what Peyton's done. Yeah, at defensive end, those last two. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. So that's good news. You know who's been lost? And I'm just wondering if he's a tweener. And I think that ultimately he'll find a home because he's instinctual. He's a hard hitter. He's got a very good nose for the football. We know that. he's just Right now he's just stuck betwixt and between. It's Shaheen Brown. Uh, we haven't said a peep about him in this camp. And last year, when we first got a look at him, we talked about him often because he demanded we do so. It was like a pick a day. Uh, right now, he's just, you, you know, persona non grata. And I think it's, he, I think he's going to segue at some point maybe into a smallish linebacker. He might. I mean, yeah. And he's got the nose for it. He's tough. And I saw one turnover. Well, he arrived for one turnover when I was watching trench drills from seven on sevens because he took it all the way back to the other half of the yeah. field. But I think that also is just a credit to what Akeem Dent has done and how he's turned it around. Sure. That it seems at this point, and there's a long way to go, pretty much half a spring camp and a whole fall, fall camp, but that you feel like your two safeties are, are fixed in Akeem Dent and Jamie Robinson. Those are your guys. You That's got no the end problem of the discussion. There. Right. So the question is, you know, if one of those spots opened up because of injury or because the competition got close, then you could he could re-enter the conversation. But I don't know that we're looking like if we're if we're covering practice and looking at positions of need, like in the beginning of camp, receiver and defensive end, you're looking very closely at those positions. You're not really looking at safety saying, I hope they find an answer there. No, no, you're good there. Second corner is another place that you're looking, but not safety. You know who had a good rep yesterday? A good rep for the first time in eons, Thomas Schrader. Oh, hey, it's the potential. He's got to get up to speed. That body's been through a lot and not football. And he had a good rep yesterday. I want to point it out. All is not lost. There was a good rep. Had One yesterday. rep was, was enough for you to say, wait a minute. Well, I had written him off. I had written him off. I, I was, uh, you know, every time you bring up like Bryce and Estes or something, I'm like, <sighs> but. Schrader had himself a rep. You just don't want to be there for the climb. You want to be at the apex to welcome want, them when they well, arrive. I'd like them to get there faster. I'd like us to reach the summit a little bit quicker. Some people like to go up the mountain. No, no, I understand. You take the I'm, yeah, uh, the journey to the top is ultimately what it's all about. But if you can get there quicker, like say using the ski lift, it beats the hell out of walking. So for me, Let's get up there a little bit quicker. That's for all you. I'm saying. Yeah. I think the ski lift for a player would be a massive injuries to the depth <laughs> chart ahead of them. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. Okay. Anyhow, I, uh, I'm hoping I, I saw something yesterday for the first time and I was like, Oh, look at that. A good rep against a quality player. That's a, that's something he did have a long climb does have a long climb is battling back was unable to reshape and change his body was unable to garner the strength necessary to take the step forward all due to injury. That is not his fault. Agreed. It's just damn. You know who's had a couple of good reps the last week? And this is a bookmark for the future. He ain't helping now. <laughs> so I'm not trying to hype him up. Yeah. And I had Charlton had a couple of good reps yesterday All in those individual right. drills too and, and the group drills as a run blocker. He also looks to me like maybe some of that bad weight has been shed because he's moved around a lot during these practices. Mm -hmm. I think by default, you're going to lose some of that bad weight, but he looks like he's trimmed up a little bit. I mean, what's eight pounds if you're 340? It's nothing. <laughs> but I think he might have lost those eight pounds. Yeah. Um, well, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. We will point out these things. It is spring football. This is not an all summer long thing. I'm not going to spend two hours every day, all day when there's nothing to report from the football program. But right now, where we are, at least on the JCS and what's interesting, I mean, obviously basketball season's over for us. I'm not previewing you final four games on a Wednesday. Uh, Major League Baseball has not started yet other than spring training. Uh, it wouldn't play in this town for us to do 
a uh, postseason hockey preview. Same for the NBA. So there's a lot right now that is not at our fingertips, and that's why we spend a, a, an inordinate amount of time, quite frankly, on the little gains here and there in spring football. And I say that for the people who, listen, the hardcore guys on the boards that are watching it every day, I mean, you guys, you, you wouldn't care if we only spoke of Florida State football two hours every day, all day, 365. But for uh, the broader audience, and I have a huge one, um, you know, that that's, I, I get it. You'd rather me go somewhere else occasionally, and we can. It's just not during spring because you only have a select amount of days where you can really break down and look at this team, and we're getting a glimpse at it every day. Yeah, we get two and a half hours to look at these things. It's amazing. I mean, you got to take get that, that privilege you, and use it and discuss it. You do. You do. Rather than here's what Mike said about practice take it or leave it. You know, like that's how we existed for so long with these previous coaches. I do think, though, again, I think he's pretty fair in his assessment of all this. Hey, you know something struck uh, stuck out to me yesterday during Florida State's loss to Florida. I was watching that game intently, obviously, and uh, when they were when they were looking around the rest of the country, man, did you know Tennessee was that good? Were you aware that Tennessee, not Vandy, and yeah. they play this weekend, by the way, it's worth your time if you like college baseball, I suppose. Uh, but did you know that they were that good? They got one freaking loss in the team ERA under two? What in the world is going on here? I was made aware this weekend, and that's it. You know, I, Not because I was flipping around, I'm like, ooh, Tennessee baseball, but because it, it came up. And I think that's what's happening this last week is, all right, it's We're gone on gears. long enough. Yeah, it's like, gone on long enough that this is not an accident. Yeah. Well, they're 23 and one, Tom. And I can't remember a time that I saw a cop. It's baseball. You could be the best team in the country. And by now you have a minimum of four or five losses. You just do. You don't believe me? Okay, here you go. The RPI in order. Reads Tennessee, Oregon State, Gonzaga, Oregon, Vanderbilt. That's the top five in the R. Gonzaga. RPI. Yeah, I know. What? They have number two strength of schedule, so that helps. Um, they're 16 and six. I don't know what to think of Gonzaga baseball. They're in the West Coast Conference, for Christ's sakes. Also, I would tell you this. I, having been to Spokane now, in that general area, I don't know how at Mark View or anybody gets anybody on earth to go there to play anything. That place sucks. There's nothing good about it. There's no reason to be anywhere near there. None. None. If you venture 200 plus miles away from Seattle over to where Spokane is, you think, my God, the town time forgot. This is hell. And he gets be the Gonzaga signs are everywhere. Everywhere you go, you're like, look at that. Red Pete's getting people out here. It's crazy. In the airport. So is it like uh the okay, it's ass. the Chiefland of Washington? Yes. No, uh, it's it's no reason. None. And I'm open-minded about these things. I get that you can't judge a city. Oh, I am. I am. I am. I'm pointed, but I am honest about these things. I get that you cannot judge a city by the interstate. I mean, if you're driving through any city on the interstate, the city, in your estimation, by what you see from the interstate is this place sucks. There's not too many times you've been on an interstate anywhere and gone, look at the beauty of such and such. No, you're on the interstate. No, that's not, that's not what a place is. So we ventured off. We ventured off. I looked around. We drove all around. Mm -mm, no, no. I got a problem with garbage. You'd be surprised. Wow, you wouldn't think so. No, you wouldn't. And that's why wow. it's surprising. They just float ass garbage every which way but Sunday for no reason. I'm like, what are we doing? Is around? that where we put it as a country? We're like, come on, Spokane. Spokane. Let's pick up our trash, shall we? Same with the upper portion of Idaho. Those people, the, screw it. They just throw it. Really? I, yes. Yes. Anarchy in Idaho. Oh, well, well I, you, you can guess that. Yes, they don't want the government's intrusion. But it's unreal, buddy. It's unreal. Is that the uh, the way of things in Idaho? Oh, Idaho's insane. Yes. Albertsons and freedom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of those places in Idaho, you're like, ooh, that's a tough upbringing. A lot, but, of, it, a lot of incorporated towns. But Boise is not unincorporated towns, right? No, yeah. Unincorporated. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. But Boise is supposed to be different. That's that's good Idaho. Yes, yeah. There are there are places throughout both uh, anywhere in the Pacific Northwest. There is blinding beauty. I mean, there are there are places without question. Uh, Spokane ain't one of them. That's what I'm telling you. Spokane is not one of them. I was blown away. Now that's an entire aside diatribe based on Gonzaga's ranking at number three, which I'm not buying. But the point would be. That is the top five in the uh, in the RPI for the whatever that 
is that the iterative? Is that what they call that? I got oh, man, I got no idea. You just took me back to like uh, four. Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me go back. Actually, I got that wrong. Gonzaga's six when it comes to that. If you go to the pseudo RPIs, it's it's Dallas, Baptist, and Tennessee, and uh, and then Gonzaga's six down there. Okay, so you can manipulate this. Um, but there's Tennessee at twenty three and one. The other teams that would fall in this category now, Florida State is seventh after the loss last night. Seventh is good. Seventh will work. Feeling pretty good about seventh. But let's see records. Of the top seven teams in that category, you have a team with eight losses, a team with seven losses, another team with seven losses. Gonzaga has six losses, even the great, you know, uh, Texas Tech, five losses. Uh, Florida State, seven losses or eight losses, whatever we are now. Uh, all the teams, you know, all these teams that have gaudy rec- – the only – like Virginia is top 15 – but they and they only have two losses, and then there's Tennessee with one loss. That's what I'm saying. It's absurd. It's absurd. And some of those strength of schedule numbers and Tennessee's strength of schedule is not good right now. Right. Ours is super aggressive. I know that much. Yeah, but I mean, goodness gracious, how do you go through a baseball season with one loss? That's nuts. They're gonna have to return to form. That means they're winning every one run game. <laughs> I think it also bothers me that it's nobody. Tennessee. Let, let's see. Oh, no, who cares? They've been irrelevant in everything for the ages, but mm-hmm. I'm just pointing out. And you want to keep it that way. Well, that's, no, the dot, dot, that's the ellipses. No, no, I like pointing out the ineptitudes of the Volunteers football program in particular because they know and we know and everybody knows who watched had Florida State been healthy for that national championship game, as in Chris Winkie plays, we win by four touchdowns. They know it. Those hillbillies know it. It's Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. God gave us two ends, one to think with and one to sit on. Success in life depends on which one you use. Heads, you win. Tails, you lose. Hi, I'm Rick Hughes, host of The Flat Line. Heard every Sunday morning here at 7.30 a.m. on Real Talk 93.3 Tallahassee Real Talk Station. Come join me, 30 minutes of motivation, inspiration, and some education as I seek to reveal God's plan by teaching 10 unique problem-solving devices. Every Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m., 93.3 Real Talk Tallahassee. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue just north of Havana have become your destination for the best food either side of the state line. But what if you want fresh seafood? Say no more. Kenny and the crew have got you covered with seafood so fresh, the only way you'll get it fresher is if you grow a set of gills. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, one mile north of the last light in Havana. Highway 27 Grill and Barbecue, open seven days a week. Get your fill at the grill. This is an insurance market alert from Barbara at Faircloth Insurance in Tallahassee. A few months ago, I asked you to contact your legislators to help stop the skyrocketing property insurance rates in Florida. Other states average two lawsuits per day on property insurance claims. Florida has 384 per day. The property owners of Florida are being taken advantage of, but it is not by the insurance companies. The companies are paying out 10 times the cost of a claim or more that would have been paid anyway. People are canvassing neighborhoods, knocking on doors, suggesting that the property owners owner may have some damage. The property owner innocently signs something that turns all control of any claim settlement to an attorney that becomes the person designated to get the claim check and who controls the disbursement of the claim payment. If we want these rates to go down, we must reach out to our legislators and let them know how unaffordable home insurance has become and that we want them to support reform that will fix the issues. This has been an insurance market alert from Barbara at Faircloth Insurance in Tallahassee. 
diabetes, high blood pressure, anxiety meds, everyone's on them. If you're a 50-year-old male, maybe a bit beefy or even with type 2 diabetes, a million dollars of term insurance may only cost you about 200 bucks a month. Affordable term life insurance is out there. Call term provider and speak with Big Lou at 800-481-1458. 800-481-1458 or visit BigLou.com. Remember, Big Lou's like you. He's on meds too. Have you wanted to speak a new language but thought it'd be too difficult or take too much time? Then try Babbel. In just 15 minutes a day, Babbel teaches you conversations that you will actually use. With 14 languages and lesson topics like travel, business, relationships, and more, you'll learn what matters most to you. Babbel. Language for life. Learn a new language with ease. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a -a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. Benefits that come with having a trusted, reliable, and highly trained crew who can be held to the high standards of T-Spark. Experts in their craft with pride in their work. That's the T-Spark difference. Give them a call today. They're the best in town. 766-1340, 766-1340, or get a free quote online. Tsparkconstruction.com. That's Tsparkconstruction.com. Jason writes. I'm new to social media. Well, let me interrupt you. Run! Run for the hills! It's not a friendly place. It highlights the worst in all of us. Uh, Okay, sorry, got that out there. Are all these kids posting photo shoots of their visit to FSU normal? Are all schools inviting so many players to visit, or is this something Norvell has done? I like it. No, most of the competitive Power 5 programs are, in fact, doing this silliness where everybody gets to take a picture in the uniform and dance around and pose. Um, and so Uniforms that will never be worn in a lot of cases. Half the times, yeah. yeah. But you got to cater to the kids. They grew up on social media, man. They don't know anything else but having a camera shoved in their face and taking a picture of every waking second of every day of everything they've ever done. Look at this food. So that's what you get, and it's um, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. Now, what I do like is that, uh, you know, obviously Norvell and staff understand that, and they've kept it relatively normal. I mean, you don't have our coach dancing around like a dumbass the way that Brian Kelly does where it looks completely – um inappropriate where he's a he looks like a, a child molester but i mean so i mean to me we're doing it as much as i loathe it the best way you can they should play cotton eyed joe in that room shouldn't they <laughs> when that thing you mean when Brian around. Kelly's dancing? Yeah, yeah and the 360 thing yeah uh yeah most schools do it uh we did it last year i remember putting the graphics together you know we had needed to for signing day and it's like all right let me see if they've Mm. posted on either their Instagram or their Twitter, a photo that they took in front of the big red sign or the big red sheet, you know, cause that was uh, the was theme a last thing. year. Yeah, yeah. 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 I would, I will say this uh, for all my cynicism. I do think, listen, if you're a high school kid and you've dreamt of playing big time college football, Florida state, wherever, 
and you are good enough to be recruited by that program and they ask you to come on a visit and they're soliciting your services and it's a dream come true and somebody turns to you and you're 17 years old and says, hey, you want to put on the uniform, take some shots for your, you know, uh, for your personal record and all that or whatever, see what it looks like to wear the garnet and the gold and you've always dreamt of doing it. Yeah, if I put myself in their shoes at 16 or 17 years old, I could see wanting to do that or being excited about it and not saying no. Um, but, but again, I, I, that's, that's, that's what it is. Uh, thanks, Jason. Appreciate your contribution. I, um, you know, I mean, I'm, 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 it's not my era as people like to point out, but every generation, every era of being has engaged in silliness loathsome behavior, mine included. Everybody does. Generation X is not without its foibles. It's just that this generation's is particularly annoying because you have to see it at all times. It is omnipresent and that is photoed in film. Well, to your point with Jason, no, you don't. You don't have to see Oh, you don't have to. You can run. You just, you you just can leave run. social media well, and go about your day. Is, yeah. It doesn't show up on TV screens. Save for the fact that we can't really do that because we, we use it as a filter and to vet the news of the day and to follow people that may very well be coming here to play football and, and to talk about what we've gleaned from uh, that presence. So th th there's not, I mean, I don't follow all these kids. What I'm saying is that many in my timeline do based on the news accumulation that I try to make sure I check at the beginning of every day. So you, you, it's unavoidable for you and me, but it is avoidable for Jason. One thing to note about, interacting with high school recruits and maybe something that's a little bit different. It stands out to us more because the pandemic has largely ended here, at least in terms of policies within the athletic department sure, and in sure, the state sure. of Florida, certainly. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you're open for business. You're doing business. Absolutely. There are truckloads of high school players Man. coming to these practices. Oh, there's an entire high school yesterday. Right? Two of them. Two of them. Yeah. Two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There were Leon personnel, Godby personnel. And then Thomas County came over last week. I mean, and you're talking dozens of kids from these institutions. So the sidelines are full. And it's um, on days where, you know, the weather's good enough for be uh, for us to be at, at Hauser, you can really see it from above. Because oh, you're just yeah, looking at yeah. the perimeter of the two practice fields that they primarily use. And it's just kids everywhere and their coaches. So this program is being as welcoming as possible to bring in as many it's players the Bobby as possible. Bowden approach, by the way, it's a smart approach when you're trying to bounce back or build back in this case, he was just trying to build period, but it's a wise policy to be an open book and to say, everybody come on in, man. We want you to see what we're doing because we're very, very proud of the way we operate. We're proud of the way we develop. We're proud of who we are as coaches. We're proud of this university. We're proud of its traditions. We're proud of our players and our assistants. Come on in and take a look around. Lights on, baby. Lights on. This is not done in secrecy. You got any questions? You want to ask me about anything? You want to see it uh, as it plays out in real time? Come on in. That's smart. Now, when you get to a place where you can be selective, where you can turn people away, where you can say, you know what? If you don't like it, tough luck. I've got another five-star who wants to come and take your place. That's a different deal, and maybe you operate differently. But where we are right now is... And moreover, that's just their standard policy. I don't think it will change. If they go 12-0, and 0, I don't think it changes. I really think that that guy, and this is my favorite thing about Mike Norvell, my very favorite thing. From day one, he has understood the relationship uh, between his program, building a program, and the media, also the kids that will eventually make up the program, their parents and supporters, right? He's always understood that in order to connect, and it doesn't always work, You sometimes kids choose a program that has, you know, been to the college football playoff each of the last three years over you. What are you going to do? Or that pays in the modern era a kid more money to come to that institution. What are you going to do about that? Not much. But save for those ex extreme circumstances, it, it's wise to point out something here. You cannot be that open unless you truly believe in every aspect of what it is you're doing, because it's going to be found out. You have got to believe in the way that you're teaching, the way that you're conducting practice, the way that you're coaching, the way that your assistants buy into the same methodology and teach it and coach it as well, the way that you relate to your players in the good and bad moments of a practice of failure and success. You have to believe in all of it completely to be that open. And that's the number one indicator that at the very least, this guy believes 
and exactly what it is they're doing on a day-to-day basis to build this program to where we all want it to be. Now, does that sound like a PR rep for him? It might, but that's an observation. I'm not, you know, my reputation certainly wasn't built by, uh, you know, not telling you how I feel. So I'm just letting you know, I, I mean, he's made mistakes and we'll rip him for those mistakes, just like we're praising him for this. But what I'm saying is that is my favorite aspect of who and what he's about as a coach. And that comes from, I believe, what his experiences were as a young football player. And so that's cool. That's great. That's awesome. That gives you the best chance, I believe, to win over some of these kids that are maybe 50-50. Well, and that's how you impress kids who probably shouldn't come here based upon the last five, six years of Florida State's programs. Relative success and a lot of failure Mm -hmm. is you got to be genuine. There's there's no other way. If they see like a, a fake preacher type talking to them, when they come up here for their first visit, there isn't going to be a second, especially when we don't win football games. Well, here. only if you're giving false promise. That's the whole thing. Like he can be a little preachy at times, but what I'm no, saying but is fake. I mean, yeah, fake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I get being demonstrative and boisterous. Lord knows I'm that daily, but you, yeah, you're right. I think it has he to hardly come comes from across the... as fake. There are no. times where I'm like, he's a weird cat, but that's him. He is who he, <laughs> he is. He's a weird cat. I think he's got a unique sense of humor. We'll never truly get to know it, but I think he's got a very weird sense of humor that I kind of respect. Uh, and I might really absolutely love if I knew him better. Yeah, he's um he's the kid in high school class whose humor is based around volume. He just wants to shout. You know, he'd be like, good morning, Mrs. Anderson, as loud right. as he can. And it's like, oh, you're like, ha, 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 it's Mike. He's here. All right. That's like, that's kind of his humor. It's strange. It is. Because usually that that ends after about <laughs> your, but I, your sophomore but that's his thing man he's yeah well i think he wants real engagement and if i'm using a bullhorn to get your attention you can't ignore me <laughs> yeah so there it is so, yeah i think that's right uh, yeah it, i think he wants real engagement and um i get that i i think he you have to be enthusiastic about change in order to exact it. I think. I don't think you can be banal. I think There's you. There's a t-shirt. Well, I no. I just think in general, if you're trying to make changes in anything, you have to a choose the change, whatever it is you want to be different, and then from there, in order to get others to even pay attention to what it is you're trying to change, you have to enthusiastically embrace why it is you want to change the process you're going to go through to change it and why they should be involved in it. So, you know, if you're a kid, you're like, "Eh, I don't know, I mean, I'm selling a vision. I'm selling a long-term vision. This isn't for next week. I'm selling you a long-term vision. And by selling, I don't mean I'm trying to get you to buy a product you don't need. I'm saying this is good for all of us. We're all going to go here, the climb, et cetera. But I got to enthusiastically do that. And then for you to affect change, you have to accept that, also embrace that enthusiasm and pass it on. Yeah, well, and, and spring and fall camp, just as a philosophy for him, he explained this when we had 10 minutes with him before the pandemic hit, when he was the new coach in town and we yeah. had the lunch in. It was like the next week, it's all gone. Um, you know, it, it's like spring camp for you golfers out there is demo day. That's when everything is out there on the range. Hit yeah, whatever you want, see whatever you want, you want. Here yeah. it is. Fall camp is much more about business, the business in front of us, the business of the season. And that's why spring camp, ideally in his mind, is going to be in the afternoons. He had to stick to the mornings when he first took over because of the previous coaching staff's academic schedule for the players because mm-hmm. Willie did morning practices. But he loves afternoon practices because he knows that there's a better chance in the spring. If you're in the afternoon, you can get plenty of kids on campus. Mornings, it's tough. Kids are going to class. In the, in the fall, he doesn't care about that because it's about the opponent. But in the spring, it's demo day. Come on out. Everybody <laughs> come see it. And then the weekends, you see it. Every one of these weekends, they're bringing in kids from all over the region. I mean, they are not not pounding the pavement. We've all been in sales meetings where we know that, oh, man, this guy talks a great game on a yeah, Monday afternoon going anywhere. or Monday morning at 9. But by Thursday, his report's going to be buckus. There's we nothing. We could write a story, you oh. and I, of some of the folks that we've worked with in this business uh, with those promises and inactivity that followed. There's nothing better than some of that. Like a weekend, you and I are looking at each other like, Really? Again? Again with this? Okay. Hey, where's so-and-so? Oh, his fat ass is sitting right in there where you think he is. Okay. okay. You just quoted yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I did. It's the Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chat TV.
Your local news now. The Leon County Sheriff's Office arrested a 16-year-old male and he was taken to a juvenile assessment center. The juvenile was charged with possession of a weapon on school property. At 11.30 a.m., Leon County Sheriff's Office school resource deputies were made aware that a Lincoln High School student was seen at a park on the 500 block of Easterwood Drive with a weapon. When the student returned to Lincoln's campus, a school resource deputy engaged the male student. The student acknowledged he had a handgun-style pellet gun in his vehicle. The high school was not placed on lockdown. Governor Ron DeSantis Scientists and Attorney General Ashley Moody announced Tuesday afternoon that Florida will be leading 20 states in an action against mask mandates on public transportation. The current CDC order was set to end on March 18th, but was extended through April 18th by the Biden administration. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. A wind advisory continues until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Daytime highs approaching 82 this afternoon. Under partly cloudy skies, southerly winds 15 to 20 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows level off around 67. Highs around 76 tomorrow. Scattered thunderstorms likely. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 81. See Nice Tire and Auto Service at 4792 Bluntstown Highway today. The ASC trained technicians at Nice take the guesswork out of fixing your car. That's why wherever you see the Goodyear sign, you'll find what you want in tires and service. From preventative maintenance to a major overhaul and everything in between, you name it. Plus, Nice's services are backed by a nationwide limited warranty. Stop by Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Bluntstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. We have Brian Kilmeade from 9 until noon. Do you realize I'm giving you the play-by-play of just Democrats? They cannot get on the same page. So they have this signature package that is coming out on an economy that they think needs their socialistic, more equitable way of financing. And their own party can't agree on what should be in the package. They've had six months to get this done. Tune in for the Brian Kilmeade Show, live from 9 till noon on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. <laughs> More life, more opportunities to get in shape, be held accountable, and it's science back. It's not some willy-nilly nonsense. This is something that is tangible that you can watch transpire with the science behind it and the effects of it and the way that you feel on a daily basis and the way that you look and how you arrive at that place. And if you're a uh, curious type and you've said, I don't know, man, I don't know, it looks... Looks a little rugged. Looks a little tough for me. Well, I understand. When you walk past the studio itself because of the tent and all of that, you kind of think, man, it looks like they're getting after it in there. It seems a little, a little much, but it's not. And your first class is always free. And you find out people aren't staring at you. They're not looking over at what you're doing, what you can or can't do compared to them. They're too worried about making sure they get through the damn class because they have benchmarks, they have goals, and they've been able to monitor with interval training their progress, where they're at and where they want to go. That first class is free. Come on out and check it out and find out for yourself what it is I'm talking about. The first month is free if you purchase a heart rate monitor. So you really have 
uh, no reason not to go out there. And uh, I, I believe in what they do. I believe in uh, the way they do it. And so it is that I would tell you to uh, go check out Orange Theory Fitness, two locations in town, north side over there by Fresh Market and also uh, Midtown by the Brass Tap. They don't advertise with us, but it's right there. They should. They should. Oh, Brass no. Tap is still one of the locations of a, of a great moment that you it and is. I experienced it together. Is. But, you know, we've got enough places that we like to hang our hats. That is, so that's that is correct. I'm just I'm saying, listen, I'm not turning down more places that <laughs> want to spend money with us. I'm just saying that uh, yeah, every time I think of that place, I do laugh just because of the one significant time we were there with yeah. all that happened mm -hmm. in slow motion. The only thing that I need to happen here is uh, I'll be able to take a silver strike and put it back on the floor of the CP. Why is silver strike gone? Oh, it's been gone for years. I know, but why? What would happen? Did it just break? And he said, you know, I, I think more people like to play the golden team. They do. And I say, you know what? Poppycock. Silver Strike is way more fun. <laughs> uh, there's been an influx of the word poppycock as I yelled at Ira the other day. You did? I said poppycock. This During headlines? Poppycock on Monday. When he didn't show for his oh, regularly oh, scheduled so there, well, You planted it. You planted yeah, it. There yeah. you go. Yeah. There's the germination in my brain. Made it out. Well, it's just a fun phrasing. I mean, it really is. Um, it's just fun to talk about the poppycock when you say it loud like that. That is the depth at offensive tackle. Yeah, mm -hmm. there it is. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, every time we fall back on a concern from this spring, I say, well, you know, I'm not in love with this offensive line again. You yeah, know, that's what happens. It, there's a lot of moving pieces, though. They're experimenting. He talked about it yesterday. Yeah, I mean, and and that's right, though. It, once you have a five that you like or a six that you like, and you, and you really start honing in on the mixing and matching. I mean, you know, we're not speaking out of school, but you saw yesterday, and, and Mike actually, I think, admitted to it in his he did. in his presser, he so did. we can speak about it. Dudes are moving all over the place. They're ex they are openly experimenting. Now is when you have to do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, you absolutely have to do it. Uh, soon here, late in the segment, I will give you some. Uh, Wild cards with great value at the Valero Texas Open. And I will also uh, take a look at probables. We'll do all of that. By the way, you know, Max Scherzer, here's your boy. Max Scherzer is uh, still weird. Most most wins, nine to one odds. If you take him to have the most wins on the season, you get oh, nine, to, nine to one. Yeah, that's not a bad bet to sprinkle some pizza money on. I'm looking at all kinds of baseball bets. He's buddy. more likely to make it through a full campaign than DeGrom. He'll have dead arm for like a few weeks, but I don't or see he'll just be out I then again I, I shouldn't tempt the baseball injury gods with my team that's stupid but i I'm, just did i've got another i mean well we're just throwing them out here they're free plays for everybody but i was going through totals again yesterday and this is a lot of fun you know it's gonna be a fun team to watch see i discover the fun teams to watch more than most i have to i'm put in a situation where watching my team who spends seven dollars on their payroll there's no there's no upside other than I love them. I see them run out. Oh, those are great uniforms on a beautiful, beautiful field. And then we're down seven to nothing in the third. So for me, it's like, all right, well, let's flip it around and find some other games here where that are going to be highly competitive. Uh, and I love the process of young baseball teams and young players getting better before our eyes. They go through, they take their lumps, and um, you know, let's say you lose 100 games, right? But you but you identify three or four guys. You're like, hey, he's a player. He's 20 right now. He didn't know what he's doing. But eh, they figured out the hole in his swing. He'll adjust. And then the next year they lose 84 games. You're like, okay, not great, but you can see it's coming. That's a young arm. You know, so-and-so is about to take that step forward. He ate more innings, more strikeouts, per yeah, all that stuff. The Marlins, and if for the criticism that they get, you would admit, for as much as they sell off, they get stuff in return. And two or three yeah. years later, they emerge as a problem team. Yeah, and I would, you know, as a Mets fan or, or a fan of a power team, well, whoever their developers are. They do a great job. You need to hire those people. Yeah, yeah. Because, because, it's like the Rays do it even better, of course. But but I, I think the Marlins are right there, maybe even a little bit better with the Rays in developing people you never heard of. Like the Rays get prospects, and you're like, oh, yeah, well, you're going to give that guy to the Rays. Player, He's going to yeah. be a good player. Yeah. The Marlins is like, who? Who the hell's throwing 99 but they as, get a, really as a 220 young. ERA? Yeah, what the yeah. hell is this guy all about? Well, I bring it up because the Marlins over under win total is 74 and a half, and I'm going over, man. I think they win more than 74 games. I do. I do. I think they're a fun team. I thought the Phillies were a little high, and that's not just because Matthew's here. It was, I think it's 86 and a half. That feels a little rich for a team that, you know. 
doesn't defend. They're going to give up a lot of runs. Yeah, they don't defend. Right. At all. The Mets and Braves were tied at 90 and a half in the, uh, in the AL East, or in the NL East. I should say Braves and Mets because they won it. They should get the first dibs. But I feel like that might be low for one or both. The Braves don't have a ton of weaknesses. They replenished first base like it was nothing. Olsen's a good player. Yeah. Better defender? Yeah. Yeah. I hope the Cardinals win under 85 and a half games. Can I just throw that out there? <laughs> just if like... they win 86, they're going to win the World Series. That's how well, it works. Because yeah. now well, more teams get in. One year, yeah. More teams get in. They'll get in with 79 wins somehow with a tiebreaker procedure. It's a fun process to go through this as the totals come out and we're getting closer and closer. And, you know, anyhow, just, just some things to look at. I, I had fun with that. Um, you know, weekly, you can have more fun with prize picks. Use promo code WARCHANT and take a look at my picks for the Valero Texas Open, everybody. Uh, at some, Maybe that's my next job, my side gig. My side hustle right now is on the PGA Tour Network, uh, Sirius XM with Beyond the Tips uh and you know the many things we do here but i would tell you i want to i want to be included on the horses for courses argument every week matthew does a good job of it too um uh, that's that's it's just so much fun and looking at those numbers a lot of stuff gets geeked out with metrics and, and advanced tools and all that like baseball you can go deep 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 down the rabbit hole unless i'm being paid handsomely to work for an organization to figure out you know left-handed hitting by moonlight you know, I, I I don't want to do all of those numbers. It just gets too, you know, too down uh, the rabbit hole. But golf, it's it really is. Bermuda grass, terrible player, great player. Length, you know, I mean, greens and regulation based on this particular course, how many chances, opportunities do you give yourself? You know, like certain certain courses are overpowered by driver. Okay, this guy's best tee to green, you know, uh, those kinds of numbers, you can sit down in the morning and come up with a game plan for wagering on each tournament. It's just fun as hell. Can I say as a footnote, I was trashing the match play, and usually you need to have good matchups, but it was good. It was really good. It was good all weekend. Yeah. I was locked in. So uh, since I indulge me, everybody, uh, yep, there you since go. I do I pay attention. Well, no, since I do pay attention to the golf, uh, you should root for Scotty Scheffler, period. Uh, his story is awesome, and he's a great guy and a really effing good player, and he wins on all surfaces, and it doesn't, you know, once he unlocked the key to winning, his first 70 tournaments, he didn't win. His last five, he's won three. So my man is on fire. He's going to win a major. He's going to be in the mix. He's unafraid. He's got every shot, and he swings his own unique swing. Like he does, he dances a jig on the tee box every time he swings the club. It's crazy. That back foot is halfway to Texas. Hey, as an Irishman, I take offense to that. But I, no, I, I, that. I love him, man. I, I love watching him play. Um, he's an artist. He shapes shots in ways that they used to do it when the ball was wound differently and you could do that. Like it's not about a certain kind of swing, it's about moving the ball and doing things. And he's got enough distance for days, so it's not a problem there either. But he's he's fun to watch. Plus, he's got some what for to him. He's not afraid. There's no you don't oh, see if that. he needs to make a 16 footer, it's gonna get there. Yeah, it may go oh, five feet by. Right. So you don't care. No, and that is amazing. That's yeah. you have to admit that's a unique skill. That's hard to do, but to push a ball five to seven past. I wonder if he can do that at Augusta and if that might rule him out and he might have to learn the hard way. Yeah. Like, oh my God, there's a four putt. And you know, he's a good putter, but you know, he just, you missed the wrong spot there. You know, oh, 15, you if you're a little overzealous green. on 15, yeah, you're yeah. going in the water. Yeah, 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 I know. Well, and then there is a learning curve at Augusta. There's no doubt about that. Very few guys walk in there like, oh, I got this. I mean, unless they had. And, and but he's got the trajectory to do it. That's the thing that's tantalizing about him. He can have the ball land stone dead where it needs to, and usually it's a tabletop at Augusta on several of those greens. One of the problems is many moons ago, uh, as brought on by Tom Watson, uh, they stopped using the local caddies. So the local caddies that worked Augusta National year-round for the members famously would get picked up by players tour players every week the the week of the masters and it was and and guys would arrive and they had guys that they you know got along with or who whose personalities meshed or that player understood his ball flight and they could you know, they would have these conversations and they would take on these caddies and so there were some players back in the day that could go into Augusta National fuzzy zeller won at Augusta National because, and he has admitted this, solely because of his caddy. He did not know how to get it around at Augusta. 
And the caddy was like, just trust me. I've been here for 37 years. I'm going to tell you how to hit it and where to hit it. And if you do what I say, you'll have a chance. And he woke up on a Sunday with a chance to win specifically because of that caddy. Now, that's gone the way of the dodo. That is no more. What has happened instead is that everybody brings their own caddies. And I get all of that. But I do think that makes it harder for you to come into a place like Augusta with all of the secrets and all and, and find a guy to help you out that way. All right, fire it up, cue it up. I got to get the read in here. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probables. Brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll HR services, including full online applicant onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money and headaches today. Head to NorthFloridaPayroll.com. Not going to give you the rundown of probables today because I was long-winded with my history of Augusta. Instead, I'm going to give you this. Our guy, Tom Lang, Gary Woodland in Texas at plus 3,000. Please. Yes, please. Maverick McNeely at plus 3,500. Yes, his game is on the rise. And that's about it for me. Those are my guys at Bolero. Now, I would also, if you like. And, Tom, do you have a hockey for tonight? Uh, I don't know. They're playing tonight. But next time Toronto plays, pick them. They are red, red hot. And you know me. I'm very discriminatory on Toronto. Pick to win. If you're picking a winner of the tournament, uh, a one and done, Abraham Answer. I like a lot this week in Texas. I think he'll play well. And I also like, uh, as I said, Gary Woodland, Siwoo Kim. Come on, Siwoo. I need you. Step up and just give me a top 20. That's all I need oh, is. okay. Siwoo, top 20. Top 20 plus 200? Yeah, you get a lot of plus. I got to double check what that is. Plus money for Siwoo Kim as well. Good job out of you. Good work, Matthew. And be well, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow. 